Last week I showed you in a video why you're probably combining files in Power Query the wrong way and probably missing columns, but I did not show you the entire process. I just stopped at how to get all columns and you had a ton of questions, so we're going to solve them here, okay? So this is continuation of last week's video. I'm going to post a link here down below. It will pop up everywhere. Let's get started. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so this is where we left it on the previous video. We had five files, one had four columns, we added a new one with five columns. The traditional way didn't pick the fifth column. And one of the things that you ask me is like, Ruth, what do we do with headers, right? Um, the method I showed you that I preferred is to expand the tables, these tables, using Excel.workbook. And Excel.workbook has uh, more than one parameter I'm going to show you. So here we here we can see the parameters that are available. So you get the workbook as the first parameter and then you have headers and then you have if you want to delay the types. So if you put true inside Excel.workbook it will promote the headers within the table. Let me show you. Okay, so first let me show you how the table looks like without promoting headers. If we go to the step where we are actually ready to expand, you can see here that the headers are column 1, column 2, column 3, and they are actually on the first row. But if we go up here and add true to the function, to the excel.workbook, and we go back to expanded column, you will see that they have been promoted inside the table. That means that when we actually click on custom one, it will pick up the headers correctly, right? And then you have no problem with orders. You were asking me, okay, what happens if the order is wrong? Well, if you promote the headers, Power Query will append the data correctly. So this is a good thing. Now, the second thing that you ask me is like, hey, Ruth, we want to know the file name when we combine files in order to be able to troubleshoot if we see there is a value wrong to know where it came from. So what happens is, so I said, okay, how about when you're removing other columns, don't remove the name and then you should be okay, but that's not the case. So when you do that and you use stable combine, the column name disappears. So how do we do it so we get, we keep the file name? And that's what we're going to do. It's actually a little bit advanced concept, but, but you will understand it, don't worry. I actually learned this from Miguel Escobar. There is a video that he explains everything in exquisite detail. So I'm going to link it down below. Go and check it out. I'm going to give you the rundown for it, okay? So the idea behind this is to put the name, this name, inside the table. Okay, so how do you do that? Let me show you. You create a custom column. We're going to add a column to this table, right? So table, add column. <sighs> Here we are again. So table, add column. And we're going to add um, the table is the first thing. The table is our data table, right? So that is no problem. Now, it says, what is the name of the column? The name of the column will be name or file name or whatever you name, name it. That's fine. And then the last part is, <laughs> is the top one. And again, Miguel explains it very, very beautiful. Uh, but what I'm going to give you the summarized version, but again, go to see his video. So. What you might think is that you go and you say for each name, so for each value here, go and put it in there. But as he explains very well on the video, this is actually going to give you an error because each works inside the table, inside this table. And inside that table, there is no file name or no name column, so it cannot reach it. In order to be able to reach it, you have to... You know that in M, there are contexts the same way as it is in DAX. So you have one context which is in, within the table and then one outside. So to reach the outside context, you would do instead of, this is the, the notation for each of a function. And if you would do this, it would be exactly the same as 
writing each, but we cannot do this because otherwise we would be inside the table. We want to be outside the table. And for outside the table, you just write something else. And that will create a context on this level, find the name column and then give it to the table. I know, sorry. It's a bit complex, but it works. So if you go in here, you can see that the table is actually there now. No, we are not going to put data, we're going to put name, sorry. So the name is actually in there. And uh, that's all you need to know. Now you don't need the other columns. So now our column that contains the table is called custom, not data. So here we need to change that for custom. And now you have the file name on each file. So you can put any information that you want inside the table. So really useful technique. If you want to understand it, it requires a better understanding of M. But if you are happy just to round the code to do it, then it will work, right? So uh, this is over today. I hope it answers all the questions you have. And now you can just run table combined without any problems. Okay. So thank you very much. This is all from me. I will see you again on Thursday.